everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. This is episode 39 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about something that I get super jazzed up about, and that's vehicle safety systems. And, you know, you think of vehicle safety systems and you think airbags and anti-lock brakes, and those are both vital, vital, vital components of the vehicle safety. But there's so much more about safety systems that most people don't think about. So we're going to dive into some of that today. But the reason that I'm talking about this is actually because my best friend wrecked his Civic the other day. Now, he's fine. Everybody involved seemed to be okay. But it sort of got the wheels turning in my brain um, about vehicle safety systems. And uh, I like talking about it. I think I talked his ear off for like 40 minutes about, <laughs> about all the, the cool safety features that vehicles have. And uh, most of it is stuff we don't really think about. So I like to break safety systems down into two different categories, active safety systems and passive safety systems. To me, the active systems are the things that help prevent a collision. So anti-lock brakes is a perfect example. Traction control, believe it or not, is a perfect example of Things that are built to help you never get in an accident in the first place. Heck, now we got things like collision avoidance systems and, you know, blind spot monitoring and all these boop, boop, beep, boop, boop things <laughs> beeping and flashing in our cars. Uh, you know, my Passat doesn't have any of that, but some of the newer vehicles have it. It's really cool. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I got to say, I drove a GTI with... Uh, with that in it the other day and uh, it's weird but it's awesome and anything that can help prevent an accident uh, you know I'm, I'm pretty much for. So those are the ones that everybody thinks about. Anti-lock brakes, airbags, no problem. But there's so much involved in a vehicle that we don't really think about as safety. Basically everything about a vehicle is built on safety systems. So I, like I said, airbags. It's not just that little bag that explodes in your face when you get in a collision. These are multiple speed discharge airbags. So it can fire one charge, it can fire two charges. It all depends on the parameters of the accident. We even have systems now where it monitors the size of the person in the passenger seat. Our pickup truck, for example, if you were to strap a car seat in it, it would disable the airbag. If it's got a little kit in it, it might only deploy one charge of the airbag. If it's a full-size adult with their seat belt buckled, it may deploy both charges in the airbag. But as we move away from the ones that everybody knows about, like airbags, we look at things like seat belts. So, of course, you know, click, seat belt latched. We know that that belt is meant to keep us in the seat. But when you take a look at a seat belt, not only do these seat belts have stitching in them that's meant to slow your forward momentum, some of them actually have pyrotechnics in it, which go off similar to an airbag and retract the seat belt back and pull you back into the seat. Pretty cool, right? But seatbelts, again, are ones that everybody knows. Seatbelts are important. It's a huge, huge safety component of a vehicle. But did you know that even the radio knobs of your car are built with safety in mind? If you were to take your palm and pop your radio knob, <laughs> please don't do that, especially not at my recommendation, it would actually collapse into the radio. And that's all built so that if you were to be going forward in a collision and you hit the radio, it would collapse instead of, you know, impaling you in the rib or something like that. Even the dashboard, if you take your hand and, and you sort of pry back and forth on your dashboard of your newer vehicle, you'll notice that there's give to it. And again, all built for safety. So that if you happen to hit the dashboard, the dashboard is going to absorb some of the impact of your body. We also have the steering column. As you propel forward in a collision and hit the steering wheel, especially on a vehicle without airbags, that column is gonna just collapse down. This is all meant to slow your forward momentum down. Even the headrests. If you notice on modern cars, the headrests are sort of tilted forward. So as you're driving, you're actually tilted forward a little bit. It kind of sucks for us people that aren't super tall, um, or as I like to call it, normal height, um, because you sit and you have to look down a little bit. But that's meant to keep your head forward a little bit so that in a collision, your neck's not snapping back and basically giving you whiplash. Some vehicles even have sort of a spring in the backrest so that as you're pushed back into the seat, it tilts the headrest forward to even prevent your neck from snapping back even more. Heck, some headrests like on the Beetle convertibles have, uh, have pop-ups, so if you were in a rollover, they actually shoot up, prevent your face from dragging on the asphalt. It's pretty cool, really. And those are all interior cabin pieces. Again, everything you touch, so if you're driving your vehicle, Everything that's in this space 
is meant to help keep you safe in a collision. As we move to the outside of the vehicle, safety features are still there. We have things like engine mounts that are meant to collapse in a certain way. My Passat is a great example. It has hydraulic engine mounts. In a collision, you know, head-on collision, the engine mounts are meant to break in a way that pushes the engine down away from the cabin instead of straight back into the cabin. And that actually is one of the reasons why I always recommend people that have broken engine mounts or leaking engine mounts get them replaced. It's not just an annoying leak. Um, these are actually safety systems, so, so bear that in mind. Also, as we look at fenders, if you, if you pop the hood of your vehicle and look down the fenders, you'll notice there's little bumps and ridges and all kinds of sort of weird things that look like maybe they're just meant for manufacturing purposes, but they're actually meant to absorb impact. They're meant so that in a collision, it's going to slow everything down and absorb all of that impact because as the front of the vehicle absorbs the impact, that means you're not absorbing the impact. Again, all meant to keep you safe. We hate to think of getting in an accident, but I would much rather my vehicle be completely totaled <laughs> and me be able to walk away or stand there scratching my head going, dang, I'm happy I'm all right, than have a vehicle that maybe doesn't have as much damage, but, you know, have to be carted away in an ambulance or, you know, something even worse. Depending on which panel it is really depends on how it's going to handle an impact. So front and rear collisions, everything's going to slow down. So the panels are actually soft and they're meant to give in a very certain way. When we look at the sides of the vehicle and really like the pillars up to the roof, everything gets more rigid. So on a side impact, it may not absorb so much as prevent collapse. Because if you get hit from the side, you don't want that collapsing into the cabin because as you're in the driver's seat, the B pillar is right here. You don't want that collapsing into you. You want that stopping and preventing any collapse into the vehicle. So again, depending on which panel it is really does depend on how it collapses or doesn't collapse. Volkswagen does a really good job of like triple heat, super magic of <laughs> the B pillars, the A pillars up the windshield, the C and D pillars in the backs of the vehicles, and making those very, very rigid pieces that are meant not to collapse. Unlike our fenders and our hood and our core support, where all that stuff is meant to collapse in and slow the impact down. I think some of the things that I really get geeked up about is the, it's so weird. It's the stitching on the seatbelt that I find fascinating. You know, you picture you pulling it apart and these stitches just going pop, 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 and really absorbing that forward momentum and slowing you down. Now picture uh, an igniter going off and that seatbelt ratcheting back in and pulling you back into the seat, all meant to keep you in the seat and not into the steering wheel or if you're in the passenger seat into the windshield so it's all really cool stuff there's so much there's way more than i can cover in a you know 15 20 minute show but it's all so fascinating to me to look at a component and go this radio is built to play music or play cds or play mp3s or you know have navigation but it also has safety in mind as well and that's super cool. And it's not just Volkswagen that has this. This is all car manufacturers. Everybody builds a vehicle to keep you safe. And in the unfortunate event of an accident, to prevent you from getting hurt. Now, I've actually been really lucky in my life and only been in a few accidents. I have totaled one vehicle and it was, oddly enough, just like Ben, a Honda Civic. Um, I hit a, I don't know, it was like a Yukon, probably at about 15 miles an hour on actual impact. It completely totaled our Civic. Our core support was smashed into the battery. Both airbags went off. Um, one of the things that I found really off-putting about the Civic is I couldn't get out of the car. So on the impact, it smashed the core support into the battery. So there was no electrical power. Well, you know, I'm here I am pulling on the handle trying to get the door open. I'd just been punched in the face with an airbag. There's that airbag dust all throughout the cabin. And I'm kind of panicking, you know, of course it's dark and raining out. And I can't get out of the vehicle. So I have to find the, the little release for the door and pull it up to get out. And I actually was able to unlock, open my wife's door um, before I got mine open. So one of the things that I've really actually come to love about Volkswagen when the vehicle sees an impact, it actually unlocks all the doors. In worst case scenario, if it doesn't unlock the doors, when you pull the handle on a Volkswagen, the door unlocks and you can open the door. So 
props to Volkswagen for that. There's also a million other safety features that Volkswagen has in the event of a collision that happens, but that was the one that, you know, really stood out to me. Luckily, we're okay. Again, the, the car was totaled and, you know, it sucked, but whatever. We walked away and we were fine. I had burns on my arms from the airbag hitting it. My wife had some, you know, neck pain and back pain, but you know, here I am telling the story about it, so it wasn't all that bad. So that brings me to the question of the day. Have you ever been in an accident? Were you okay? Was the car totaled? Um, you know, share your story in the comments section. I really like to hear about it. Hopefully everything was all right. If it wasn't, you know, I'm really sorry. And uh, if there's anything interesting that happened in the accident, share it with everybody. I I'd love to know about it. Or hey, if you got pictures, post it on Facebook. Um, I'm sure we'd all like to see that. Again, you know, hopefully everyone was okay. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I feel like I could talk for hours about safety systems on cars, but I'm sure you'd be super bored about that. If you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog, HumbleMechanic.com. Again, share your car wreck stories with us either on YouTube, Facebook, or on the blog. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog again, HumbleMechanic.com, or of course on YouTube. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.